What's going on everybody, Josh here with Scrapyard Films and today I'm going to be showing you another Vegas Pro 17 tutorial and this time I'm going to show you how to color grade using Vegas Pro's new color grading menu and tools. Now this tutorial isn't just going to be slap a LUT on, change a strength and you're good to go. No, this one I'm going to teach you how to do it from the ground up. We're going to do it in two different ways. One's going to be an indoor shot of me in my office and the other one's going to be an outdoor shot of some stock footage that I got, which I'll link in the description below. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, to start things off, the first thing you need to know is that to get a cinematic look, you need to shoot a cinematic style. And what I mean by that is the frame rate. Most cinematic things are shot in 24 frames a second or 23.9. And then the shutter speed of the camera is usually double what the frame rate is. And that gives you the motion blur that looks like that professional movie look. The next thing you wanna make sure is you have proper lighting. If you don't have good lighting, you're gonna have a bad time trying to make your shot look natural. And the third thing is if you have a white card or a neutral gray card that you can hold up in your shot where your subject is gonna be, that'll help you get the most accurate white balance and most accurate colors for your shot. So jumping right into Vegas, I have two shots right here. I have me in my office, and then I have a nature shot out here. We're gonna start with a nature one because that's the most dramatic effect. And then the first thing you wanna do is make sure you go to the top left and go to File, go down to Properties, and then you wanna make sure your resample method is set to Disable Resample. By default, it's on Smart Resample, and that does not make your footage look cinematic. So put it on Disable Resample, hit Apply, hit OK. So we have this outdoor footage and you can notice it's a little bit gray or like a flat look. And that's because it's shot in log. Log format basically stores information about color rather than displays it properly. So you can grade this footage a lot better and you'll see a lot nicer results when you shoot in log. So to get started, if we select our clip, hold Alt and press G on the keyboard, that brings up the color grading tools. We'll see all of our tabs down here and then all of our curved lines. And these are all of our awesome options. At the top, you'll see a vector scope and you'll see my waveform here. Now, if you don't see any of these, if you go to view and then go down to window and make sure vector scope has a check by it, if it does not, then you won't see it. But if you check it, you'll see the vector scope and most likely it'll look just like this. But we're going to be using two of the four options, which we have histogram, waveform, RBG parade and vector scope. We're only going to be using waveform and vector scope. Now what a vector scope does, it basically measures the amount of color in your shot and then it tells you where an average amount can be and if it goes beyond that, that's way too much and it'll look usually not good. So this is a color measurement and this is a color brightness measurement. That's what the waveform for luminance is. So first thing we do to make your shot look cinematic is we need to adjust this and make this waveform look better. We'll do that with these color wheels down here. Lift, gamma, gain, and offset. Lift controls the darks and the shadows. Gamma controls the mids and the mid-tones. Gain controls the highs and the highlights. And Offset controls the color of just the overall footage. That one's rarely used, but it still is useful in proprietary situations. We're not gonna be using the color portion of these options because they're way too sensitive and Vegas doesn't have the ability to manually enter the numbers in these options yet. So we're just gonna be using the sliders below these, which adjust the luminance level of each category. So to start it off, we're gonna adjust the lift and what we wanna do is make the bottom of our color measurement hit zero or get as close as possible to zero. So we're gonna drop the lift to right about there. Looks pretty good. The average is right on the line. And then we go over to gain and we're gonna raise the highs to where our luminance level hits the top right at about a hundred. That's where we wanna put our gain at. And then that raised the bottom. So what we're gonna do is go to gamma and lower this slider to where it hits right about zero again. And that's gonna provide it a real nice contrast. You can already see the footage looks tons better, but it kind of just looks like a photograph, not a cinematic shot. So to change that, we could skip on over to our color curves line, and we wanna make sure we got a nice white balance. So we wanna zoom into the whitest part of this scene, which looks like it's probably gonna be the snow for me. Snow's usually white, so we go to our pan and crop tool, and then go to our position, and we're gonna drag this down, zoom in, Go down and we want to zoom in right on snow. So right there looks pretty good to me. And you can see our luminance line got real straight all of a sudden. So once your frame is completely engulfed in white, then we're going to go down to the color curves and hit white balance and hit auto adjust. 
and that individually micro adjusts the red, green, and blue to make this the purest white Vegas can think of. It's a pretty accurate color system, but you'll see we want this dot to be in the dead center of this vector scope. And you'll see it, it shrunk it down, but it is not in the dead center. So what that means is that you see how it's to the bottom right a little bit? That means there's still too much blue and cyan. So we need to reduce the blue and cyan to bring this to the dead center. So up in our options, let's click normal and then let's go down to magnified and that zooms it in to give us more accuracy. And we're gonna reduce the blues. So we unselect these two and then make sure blue selected. This color curve line, just in case you don't know, the bottom left controls the lows and the shadows, the middle controls the mids, and the top controls the highs. Pretty simple. So we grab this option, then we drag this down. You can see it moves our cluster more over. It's reducing the blues. So we drag it just a little bit more. We wanna give it some leeway, so when we reduce the green now, it's gonna bring it back up this way to the center. So uncheck blue, check green, and let's reduce the greens. And you can see that is really close. Let's uncheck green, go back to blue, and move that just a hair more. And look at that, we are right in the dead center. So this gives us the most accurate color representation and whites. So let's go back to normal. Let's bring back our crop tool. Let's restore it. And bam, now we have accurate color. Let's uncheck this, go back to RGB. Now let's use this color curve to adjust brightness and contrast. And let's give it a little bit more contrast. That's usually what happens in cinematic things. They have a lot more contrast. So if we drag this yellow slider bar, we can bring it down to darken up the shadows, which that looks pretty good. I don't want to blow out the highlights, but I am going to increase the gain. Let's go back to gain and do the slider and let's increase it. And look at our luminance go up there. So we've increased the gain, we've increased the picture, the whites aren't blown out, but it's still bright. Maybe we could do just a little bit more. That looks pretty good. So next thing is we can add a LUT to this to give it a little bit more flavor. You can use this color wheel to adjust the colors if you wanted, but they're so tedious that I just don't use those yet. If we wanted to adjust them separately, we can use the color corrector plugin in the video effects. So we go over to this look LUT tab, we can go to file and then we can browse for some LUTs. I'm gonna go ahead and throw one on that I have downloaded. You can download LUTs for free all over the internet and YouTube. So I'm just gonna use one I downloaded. So I've chosen a standard teal and orange LUT, but we can see the strength is way too high and this just doesn't look too good right here. So we do wanna lower the strength a little bit and that reduces the LUTs strength. And right about, right about the 50% mark looks pretty good. And remember, you can click bypass color grading to turn off all the effects that you've done. That's what we started with. That's where we're at so far, which is looking real nice. You know what we can also do? We can increase the saturation a little bit. So if we go to the input output tab down here, we can go to the saturation slider and then increase that. Oh, and that's really bringing some life to it. About 50% saturation increase, looks really good. The colors still aren't blown out. The whites still look good. This is looking like a really good shot. I'm gonna drag this down so we can see it a little bit better. Now next, this is kind of over the top stuff, but you can add some additional effects to this to make it look more like a movie shot if that's what you wanted. And to do that, you can add cinematic bars to make it look like you shot it in a wider angle than it is. And so we drag cinematic bars on there. That right there makes it look a lot more like a movie for sure. But again, it's kind of cheating, but it's okay. Some people don't have a camera that can shoot in that aspect ratio. So adding cinematic bars is, is perfectly valid. Again, it's just over the top. It's a little bit extra, you know? And so I think I'm happy with the shot. So I'm gonna exit the color grading tool and then show you a couple more things you can add. If we right click on the video track and add a blank track in between the cinematic bars and the footage, we can add a film grain, an artificial film grain that is really fine millimeter film grain that makes it look like you shot it on an actual film camera instead of a digital camera. We can add that over here and you'll see we have to adjust this track a little bit. If we go over to the options on the track, and then go down to compositing mode, and then go to hard light. That blends in this film grain with your shot. And so now we've made a really awesome cinematic shot out of basically nothing, and did a really nice color grade. Next, I'm gonna color correct an indoor shot, which is a little bit different than this one. This one's shot on a regular DSLR of me, and I just wanna make sure the skin tone's right, give the shot a little bit of a mood, and make sure the white balance is correct. So, if we select the clip, Alt-G, open the grading. Again, first thing we wanna do is make sure our lift is at zero or above zero, we're good there. Let's make sure our gain is hitting about 100. 
which right there looks pretty good, the top of the luminance. And then we wanna drop our gamma to where our bottom hits zero again. That looks good. Next, here's one of those white cards I was telling you about. I put one up here and I wanna get the correct white balance. This is the easiest way to do it. Hit my pan and crop, zoom in, make sure the white is completely engulfing the entire shot. Close this and you'll see our straight white line and you'll see the white's almost there, just a little bit blue and cyan. So let's see, we go to color curves, if auto adjust does us some justice. We click that and it didn't change that too much, which means we need to do a little bit of fine tuning. So I need to reduce some blues and greens, mostly blue. So I'm gonna uncheck these two and I'm gonna drag the blue just a bit down. All right there, a little bit past the green marker. So when I check the green now, I'm gonna drag that down and it's gonna raise it to the dead center. So that looks good. Now if I hit the pan and crop tool, right click restore, I now have an accurate white balance. So here's me. I'm gonna change the vector scope from magnified to normal, and I'm gonna drop the contrast a bit. Not too much, cause that'll blow out the whites. So that looks really good to me right there. And I'm gonna decrease the saturation just a hair, maybe 10%, 11%. That looks pretty good to me. So I'm satisfied with this color grade. Now I'm gonna add a couple things outside of the color grading tools with some video effects. So I'm gonna go to exit, and then what I wanna do is scroll up and I'm gonna go to color corrector, click that, and I'm gonna drag it on my clip. And then here, we're allowed to micro adjust and put in specific numbers for the lows, mids, and highs of the shot itself. Lows are shadows and darks, mids are midtones, highs are the highlights and whites. So typically, the Hollywood effect is an orange and teal look, and that's because orange and teal are opposites of each other. So if we drag this down to cyanish teal right here, which is about 290 right there is a good a nice good teal look and then we drag the mids up to 110 we could even drop that a little bit to maybe 120 looks pretty good but now we reduce the strength of these two so this number to the right here is just the number one and that's basically zero to 100 percent one being 100 percent so if we drop this to point three that's 30 percent and we drop this to point two that's 20 percent and it's subtle but there is a difference so i'm going to turn this off and you'll see that the darks have a hint of teal. And then the mids, we could see the mid ranges are orange. We can even increase that to maybe 25%. And you'll see some life go back into my face. And if we disable it, you can see it's kind of pale white. And then we have orange, pale white, orange. And then the highs are also typically on the orange scale as well. You can see the highs mess with the white part. So usually I like to copy the mids number and put that in the highs number and then micro adjust from there, but that looks pretty good. So we turn that off. That's our first shot with the color grading. We turn the color grading off. That's our original shot. Then we add the color grading. Then we add the color corrector and that's looking real nice. Last thing is, and it's a really important one. It's color corrector secondary. This is basically a specific color changing tool. Like if I don't want my shirt to be red, I can use color corrector secondary to make that any other color I want. And usually they use color corrector secondary to change skin tones. So I'm going to show you how to do that. If you have color corrector secondary and select effective range, we could choose my forehead right here. And then we show mask. We could see that some of my forehead's color got chosen, but we want to increase that to my entire skin tone or else that'll look weird if we adjusted just the white parts. So if we play with these sliders for the luminance, saturation, and hue, we'll be able to get my entire skin tone. It's going to be different for everybody, so I'm going to skip ahead. All right, so I've narrowed down my exact skin tone and secondary color corrector with the mask, as you can see. And if we uncheck it, what I can do is increase and decrease the saturation, and you'll see a giant change specifically on my face. I can make it yellow, green, blue, red, whatever. This is That's what color corrector secondary is. It has the power to change the colors. So typically, I like to give my face a little bit of life by increasing it by 50%. And if we uncheck it, you can see it goes from white to a little bit more color. I could even go a little bit less 
Normally I don't have the color corrector this high. Maybe I'll drop this down to 15%, 15% and put the blue at 30% and then keeping the color corrector on. That's looking pretty good. And then last thing, if you wanted, which I like putting it on mine, is a vignette, which adds darkened corners. If you go down to the vignette effect, and drag and drop it on our clip, you'll see it adds the darkened corners, but just, a, that's way too much. A very awesome number, I just changed this number one up here to 1.5. That adds really nice subtle corners that really help you focus on the center of the subject. We can disable it and re-enable it to see what it looks like and you can see it makes a nice little difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the results again from nothing to fully graded. All right, and there we have it. That is gonna wrap up this in-depth Ultimate Crash Course color grading tutorial for Vegas Pro 17 that utilizes its color tools, the new whole batch of tools, and of course some of the original plugins to make you have some really beautiful footage. Um, man, this tool is awesome. It just really put Vegas right up there with all the contenders that are out there, the video editors. It is definitely something Vegas needed and now has. I'm really excited for this tool and I can't wait to make more beautiful footage. I really hope this tutorial helped you out, and if it did, maybe shoot a like, because that'd be pretty cool. And if you want, you can also subscribe to my channel too, because I have a ton more Vegas 17 tutorials on my channel, Scrapyard Films. So thanks again for watching, everybody, and I'll see you all in the next video.